Okay, moving on with examples here. Uh, CDD for a shell company, case example, your institution is asked to open an account for Linford Limited, a UK company registered in London. Uh, usually if you see, uh, you know, companies named after, as you can see here, Limited, that usually means UK or a common law country, it'd be Limited Liability Corporation if it was in the United States. Okay, it has nominee shareholders and offices that were that was purchased as a pre-registered, never traded, and ready to use immediately. Once you know, ready to use immediately. Once the account is open, it will receive 20 million inward investment from an investor in the construction business, which is highly risk, by the way. The company will be used to bid on government construction contracts. Okay, by the looks of it, this is a shell company. You must perform the standard due diligence for a legal person of this type. If you establish it as a shell company, you might need to perform enhanced due diligence. You might also find out about the investor, the source of funds, and the government contract. It looks pretty dodgy. Risk-based escalation. Your organization will specify its risk appetite for certain types of customers, the way those customers interact with you, and how a risk rating must be assigned to ensure proper checks are performed the second person might review the file this is talked about before this is known as the four eyes checks or dual controls there probably will be a question about this in the exam though by the way often for a high risk customer or transaction escalation to a more senior officer or a specialist committee will be required if your research gives a satisfactory outcome you will recommend the customer to be accepted or the alert be cleared or instead, if you discover concerns as your research, such as an adverse media, insufficient evidence of source of funds, or behaviours common in financial crime, you will probably escalate, recommending that more research be performed. Obviously, this stage goes to the next stage, and someone else looks at it. But despite that's part of obviously having controls as well, you can't escalate it to yourself. You know, despite additional due diligence that the customer is completely outside the risk appetite of your organisation, you might recommend rejecting the customer or even filing a suspicious activity report with law enforcement, meaning a FinCEN. In many cases, a four eyes check of the customer research will be enough to accept or clear the customer so you can move along. Yeah, four eyes check's really good. You basically you go to your line manager and you go, hey, I, I, I feel like this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, and he looks and goes, mm, maybe, maybe not, maybe, you know, etc. So it's always a good thing. You know, that's basically what it is. You go to your boss and discuss the file with them, or even a, you know, a, 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 you know, a colleague next to you just discuss the file. In other cases, the risk rating will require the file to be escalated for more senior review. High risk customers with exceptional circumstances and transactions will most likely need approval by senior management. That is true. Where your research raises questions about the customer, such as previous conviction for fraud, you might recommend the customer to be rejected. A pattern of SARS about the customer might lead, lead you to another SAR as you reject future business. Okay, at this point other stakeholders might be involved. These could include business and might involve legal counsel, other compliance departments and risk control functions. The business will be asked to say why the customer or transaction should be accepted and the other departments will be asked to comment on your findings and, and the associated risk. This usually takes place in a specialist committee established for this purpose. If the committee agrees with you to accept the situation, it has accepted the risk and this becomes part of the customer file. Ultimately, if you recommend rejecting the customer's risk, the committee might support you. The most likely outcome would be the direction for the organization to perform enhanced due diligence, which is always the next stage, asking you to expand your research and sometimes seek information from a specialist provider when the when that is complete the the case is then represented to the committee along with whatever recommendation you are making okay so enhanced due diligence ed for a natural person the amount of enhanced due diligence or edd that you, that you conduct for a natural person will vary by the risk category you should use what is already known about the customer to research further. Since EDD can be labor intensive, it should be conducted on your high risk customers. It is a risk based approach. Not all customers will need EDD. Regulators only require that you do a reasonable job, so it's important that you use your best judgment. Your organization will have a policy on EDD and procedures that include. Uh, additional information about the customer, such as better understanding of the source of wealth or the source of funds. EDD is intended to be very broad. This is where you look for additional in-depth information, not just confirming what you already know. Don't just look directly at the customer, but indirectly from various angles to best understand the inherent risks. Examples of what to look for include, but are not limited to, related parties, indirect links, or publicly exposed persons, or other high-risk individuals or entities. 
litigation, political or regulatory risks, overall reputation and integrity, source of wealth, required supporting documents. Some of the things you will find might push in a new direction to research. Consider the following scenarios. There might be some litigation attached to an individual linked to a customer which you might not have been aware of. Customer, while not a PEP himself, might be related by marriage to a PEP, such as the ruling of a family of a country, ruling, ruling family of a country. The customer might not have any negative news, but might be linked to a business associate who has a controversial reputation. And consider name variations, including the name was transcribed from Russian into English, so it has various misspellings. You might be your customer might be registered in various countries under those different spellings. The source of wealth is also important. How did the customer accumulate the source of wealth that he currently possesses? Once you determine where the wealth comes from, you can request the necessary supporting documents. ED for a natural person, a potential customer by the name of Mr. Garfinkel, would like to open a personal checking account at your financial institution. He lives in your community and is a self-employed personal drawer, which is high risk by the way. He plans to use his account to pay personal expenses such as his mortgage, utilities, groceries, insurance, the source of funds used to open the account. 2000 US will be drawn from his commercial account at another bank. His last name is the same as a prominent businessman in your community who owns a retail luxury watch business. Okay. Based on his occupation and your bank's risk appetite, Mr. Garfinkel would be considered a medium high risk. You should verify that the name of his company is registered and ask for a copy of his articles in corporation or equivalent. The German jewelry business is con industry is considered high risk for money laundering and tax evasion. That's because it doesn't have a lot of records and, it, and the jewels are obviously high value and small, so easily transportable. You know, you can send them abroad very easily. Determine if the customer is related to a the prominent businessman. If they are related, then you might need a reasonable explanation or they could be colluded to launder money. Search the internet for any negative news on Mr. Garfinkel and his relatives. If everything checks out and he is approved as a customer, make sure you follow the organization policy for ongoing monitoring and due diligence. EDD for a legal person, aka a company. Enhanced due diligence or EDD for a legal person requires you to extend your knowledge of the nature of, the cu of your customer. The customer's business and the type of transaction that will pass through the account. It is a combination of further fact finding and verifying the information already disclosed by the customer. Your organization will have policies and procedures for the activities you must undertake. For example, they might include a search of corporate registries for the history of the customer's customers' directors. They might also include a search of court databases or local international press archives. EDD investigations adopt a risk-based approach, use all reasonable sources to satisfy local regulatory requirements and provide relevant knowledge for an informed business decision. EDD to determine the beneficial owners and controllers of a company can be challenging. Secrecy laws in some jurisdictions do not require disclosure of the shareholders at this stage of registering a corporation. True, you must be certain that you can be as you can, that you have identified the ultimate beneficial owners and controllers correctly and documented your searches properly. Make inquiries if you discover your company is a shell company and what its purpose and will the owners and controllers change. Not all shell companies are used for financial crime. It could be of a legitimate purpose such as a trust related activity. Find out about your customers, current customers, customers, customers and what products and services does the customer sell? If it's a domestic or international, is payment immediate in small amounts and in cash? Will the customer be supplying a big contract that will be paid by bank transfer every three months? What products will the customer take from your organization? Remember, some products are a high at higher risk than others. Do the products your customer says you will use to match the business purpose? Okay, so you're just going in depth, in more in depth, more in depth. Um, your company, it doesn't really say here, talk about policies and procedures regarding EDD because it is a bit more sort of open. And, and, and vague and but but your organization will likely definitely have policies and procedures with regards to how enhanced due diligence is carried out. EDD for a legal person case example. Your organization is approached by a company named Uppsala, which is incorporated in a known tax haven. Uppsala would like to open an account in which is three million dollars to be deposited. You are told the source of funds is from the sale of property in a desirable location. The sellers of the property have decided to move home to be nearer to aging parents. Okay. Standard CDD on the company's incorporation has been completed. The owners are two local attorneys living as expatriates in the jurisdiction's high risk. 
performed enhanced due diligence on the ultimate beneficial owners and the source of funds, you must determine that two listed owners are the UBOs and the source of funds is correct. Okay, there we go.